And since this podcast has been focusing on Tyrannosaurus Rex, we came up with a list of interesting facts that you may or may not know about this giant dinosaur. So starting out simply, a lot of people know Tyrannosaurus Rex means tyrant lizard in ancient Greek, and that obviously comes from the time when we still thought dinosaurs were lizards. And they're actually, for those that don't know, considered reptiles because reptiles are not specific to a um, species or a family. It has to do with how they look and how they act. So birds and non-avian dinosaurs can also be considered reptiles along with lizards. It's a different kind of classification. T-Rex lived during the late Cretaceous period, and they were among the last non-avian dinosaurs uh, before the Great Extinction. They lived in western North America at the time. It was an island continent called uh, Laramidia, and they're one of the largest known land predators. They were 40 feet in length, 13 feet tall at the hips, and they weighed about 6.8 metric tons As Pete Larson mentioned in the interview, a lot of scientists now think that it was a predator and a scavenger because if we look at modern animals, you'll see that the real big predators don't necessarily have to hunt for their food. If something smaller kills it and they just want to go eat it, they can just come up and take it, which takes a lot less energy than trying to go out and hunt for all your food. If you're big and scary, you can just take it from the little guys. So that's probably what T-Rex did. It wouldn't have made a lot of sense for him to do all the hunting by himself. I don't know what I'm saying. He. (laughs) He's mean. (laughs) T-Rex is estimated to be capable of exerting one of the largest bite forces among all terrestrial animals. Scientists used to think T-Rex walked upright and dragged its tail, looking like a living tripod. Uh, And in 1915 convinced that the T-Rex stood upright, Henry Fairfield Osborne, the former president of the American Museum of Natural History in New York, uh, further reinforced this notion by unveiling the first complete Tyrannosaurus Rex skeleton arranged walking upright. And it stood in this upright pose for 77 years until it was finally dismantled in 1992 and put in the correct position. I always think of Barney and some of these other cartoony dinosaurs when they talk about how T-Rex didn't actually stand upright, and you'll still see depictions of this by people that don't understand dinosaurs <laughs> with them with their upright position, but when you take a closer look at the hips of the T-Rex, you can tell that it was set up for walking um, with its body parallel to the ground, which is much more efficient, and on top of that, the, the massive length of the T-Rex, like we mentioned, 40 feet in length, If it's standing upright, the heart has to pump much harder to get the blood up to its head, and other things make it more difficult to stand upright. So standing parallel to the ground is really the way to go. So in the Jurassic Park movies, they've got it right, uh, the way they depicted how T-Rex stood with its tail off the ground. Uh, But one thing that they got wrong was that the T-Rex would definitely have been able to see you even if you stood still. Yeah, T-Rex had a large part of its brain dedicated to vision and it had excellent binocular vision both of its eyes face forward on front of its head so the notion that it used smell like it did in the movie to find people or could only see them if they were moving is just for cinematic effect really t-rex shared the heightened sensory abilities of salurosauria heightened relative rapid and coordinated eye and head movements as well as an enhanced ability to sense low-frequency sounds that would allow a Tyrannosaurus to track prey movements from long distances. They did have an enhanced sense of smell. Uh, may have been comparable to modern vultures, which use scent to track carcasses for scavenging. And research on the olfactory bulbs shown that Tyrannosaurus rex had the most highly developed sense of smell of 21 sampled non-avian dinosaur species. One very interesting thing to me is how predators versus herbivores would raise their young. There's a lot of evidence to show that herbivores kind of raise their young the way sea turtles did, if you've ever seen those videos, where they go, they lay a bunch of eggs, and they kind of run away. Not quite that severe, but once they're hatched, they're pretty much on their own. It's kind of a 
numbers game where you try to have as many kids as possible, hoping that the species continues. So Tyrannosaurus rex, um, there's a lot of evidence to show that they would raise just one young, teach them everything they knew about how to hunt and raise them from a young age up until they could hunt on their own. And they had to protect their young as well from herbivores and other animals that would see them as a threat and want to kill them off. So in a really weird way, T-Rex was a much more nurturing parent than a lot of herbivores would have been at the time. So going along with their nurturing parenting behavior, they also may have fought in packs or hunted in packs. Obviously, those kind of go hand in hand if you know how to raise your young and interact with other generations you might as well work together to make things easier for you in a hunt and t-rex probably also had feathers at least on parts of its body yeah when we were in dinosaur national monument which is this really neat museum that spans the colorado utah border they have a couple points where they talk about dinosaurs with feathers and I'd like to imagine the T-Rex being covered in black feathers and looking like a giant evil raven or something like that. (laughs) And I could imagine that being much more terrifying if it could ruffle its feathers and look that much bigger than if it was just a scaly green creature. (laughs) That would be terrifying. (laughs) 